This is cycle one, week 23, rock structure identification and how I would lay out uh, this week's experiment. It's a very, very cool experiment, uh, a great capstone to some of the work we've been doing uh, in geology in this last half of cycle one. Before I jump all the way in to um, this experiment, I would uh, like to thank everyone uh, for viewing the videos and all the, the nice comments that I've seen. I'm glad that they're helpful. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I would encourage you to do so. We're one week away from finishing cycle one. Um, but my intent is to make more um, Cycle 2 science videos as we move forward with our community. And so if, if you would like to, please subscribe and then you'll get a notification whenever we post uh, new content uh, moving forward. Okay, so week 23, rock structure. The, the um, grammar uh, of this science experiment is, is the grammar from actual week 14. What are the three main types of rock? Um, I, su I suggest that the week 14 science card is a really good resource for you and for your students uh, to remind us about the different kinds uh, of rock. In fact, um, not only are we talking about rock identification this week, but we're also talking about the rock cycle. And that's, in fact, the go deeper suggestion on the week 14 cycle, uh, the week 14 science card. Um, so so t for this experiment, what I would do is I would um, get a kit. Uh, our community is using the Lighthouse Kit. It's an excellent kit of rocks. There are uh, several different kinds of each type of rock for the kids to touch and to, to see and to start getting a sense uh, of the different kinds of rocks. Um, I would open the, the class by saying to the students that we've been talking about minerals. We, we did mineral um, properties in weeks 21 and 22. And, and today we're gonna talk about rocks. So a very good opener question then is, what's the difference between a rock and a mineral? A rock is made up of many different kinds of minerals, whereas a mineral is made up of, of different kinds of atoms or maybe one atom arranged into a specific three-dimensional structure. Um, for example, this is a piece of granite, a common type of rock that's made up of quartz and field spar primarily, also bits of mica. Uh, and then other rocks have other kinds of minerals uh, in them. I would remind the kids of, of their uh, grammar and remind them that um, Sedimentary rocks like this, this is a piece of sandstone. Sedimentary rocks are made by, by layers of, of little pieces of rocks, sediments, that deposit together and then ultimately fuse together uh, into a rock structure. And, and so when we're looking at this with the unaided eye, you can see the individual pieces that, that have been um, fused together. And if we had a magnifying glass, I would encourage one for your students, they can see it even more clearly uh, there. Sedimentary rock. This is a uh, metamorphic rock. This is soapstone. Metamorphic rock um, is, is rock that's made up of other kinds of rock um, under conditions of intense heat and intense pressure. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the rock cycle itself. Um, but that's a good example for the kids to look at. Typically when we're looking at it, either with the unaided eye or with the, with the magnifying glass, we see what appears to be crystal structures uh, or, or crystalline rock forms that have been squashed together, just literally uh, pushed uh, together. Then um, igneous rock. Igneous rock um, is rock that, that literally is from uh, magma that cools. So liquid rock, extremely hot, that comes to the surface in one way or another and then cools. This is a piece of obsidian, uh, igneous rock. Again, this is a piece of granite, uh, igneous rock. Both are igneous rocks and I think it, it offers another good question to the students, especially as they're touching them. As we feel these different kinds of rock, um, this, this obsidian rock is actually very glassy and it's very smooth. Even, even on the edges, it, it's very smooth, whereas this granite rock is, is not at all, right? In addition to having multiple different colors and, and, and again, different kinds of rock in it, it's also very rough and it's not glassy at all. So a, a good question for the students is why? What makes the difference? They're both igneous rocks. They're both formed when magma cools over time. What's going on here? The difference is the rate of cooling. The, the, if magma cools very quickly, like in the case of obsidian, then what, you, what, you, what results is a very smooth and glassy rock. If the magma cools very slowly, like here for this piece of granite, then um, you see an irregular surface, one that's not glassy at all. So having reminded the, the, ki the kids of the different kinds of rocks, then I would say, and letting, giving them a chance to sort of handle them and maybe look at them briefly, you know, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes at most um, with the different kinds, then I would say we want to talk now about the rock cycle. There are a number of good illustrations of the rock cycle that are available. Uh, the lighthouse kit that we're using has a very good example of the rock cycle. 
Uh, I know um, Nicole Liam on CC Connected also has a good example uh, of the rock cycle, and I'm sure there are many others that I'm just not aware of. But I strongly suggest you find something like that, that, that you understand well and that works for you and your students, and bring it in as you talk about the rock cycle. I would also bring in blank pieces of paper with you know, um, colored pencils or markers or whatever you would like, and let the students recreate the rock cycle as you're going through it with them. So. We've talked about the rocks, we're going to talk about the rock cycle, and now let's kind of jump into the rock cycle. So if, if we imagine a sedimentary rock that's sitting on the surface of the earth, and then over time with the process of weather or, or things like that, it begins to sink and move into the crust. And eventually it continues, if it's heavy enough it will, and dense enough, it will continue moving through uh, the crust and the layers of the earth, ultimately coming very close to the magma that's underneath the crust. When it's that deep into the crust of the earth, then you have the heat of the magma source. There's also a tremendous amount of pressure on this rock. And so then as set different sedimentary rocks are, are moving down through the crust, once uh, under those right kinds of conditions, then they begin to change and they, they change structure and they become metamorphic rock, like again, this soapstone. Uh, and again, as we're looking at it, we, we can physically see, easily see, the different kinds of rocks that once existed that have been, that have been changed into this new piece of substone. Um, that's, that's happening under tremendous pressure, tremendous heat um, near, near um, the magma layer. If, this, if the rock in, in question, um, if, it, if it continues to uh, move down into the earth, it may actually enter out of the crust and enter into the magma where it liquefies. It now becomes liquid rock. And then if that rock, um, through volcanic activity or a similar kind of process, um, is brought to the, back to the surface of the earth, then it begins to cool. Uh, it begins to cool and it forms an, an igneous rock. Then, if, especially if that igneous rock, in the, like imagine a volcano on a, a mountain um, structure that's being formed, then that igneous rock now is exposed to weather, um, to, to erosion, to different processes like that. Imagine little bits of that igneous rock break off, little sediments of that igneous rock break off and ultimately uh, get deposited over time and then undergo the process of lithification and make a new sedimentary rock. And now the, the rock cycle has come one full turn. Um, and so, of course, rocks are not alive. They're not living things that God has created, but they do undergo their own form of a life cycle. And we want to stress and emphasize that to the, to the children so that they, they can see it and they can draw it and they can create something that they can refer to uh, very easily. That would be the second half of the class. And then, and maybe that's, that fills up your, your time for science, uh, depending on the age of the students and, and what you want to do. But if you've got some older kids, if you uh, are feeling adventurous, then I would go outside. I would go outside with the kids and just let them gather up rocks. Tell them to each each get one, or maybe in pairs, you know, each get two, however you want to do it. Bring the rocks back and then start trying to classify the different kinds of rocks. I, I would look and uh, and attempt to classify them based on, on the structure uh, and, and what you see. Um, and, and keep in mind, depending on where you are, you're gonna see a lot of sedimentary rocks, maybe some metamorphic rocks. If you happen to live in an area with some volcanic activity, like in the Pacific Northwest, then you very easily may find some igneous rocks uh, as well. That, that may be challenging for the students. So I would suggest that you take the rocks that are in your kit and, and use it as examples. Um, in fact, if you don't have time to go outside, maybe just take the, the rocks that are in the kit uh, and go and use those. I would suggest, um, I would take a leaf out of uh, our director uh, here in our community, uh, out of her book. I would label each rock with a number, uh, with create a key so that the tutors know exactly uh, what each type of rock is. I would even go so far as to lay out all the rocks with their, their numbers and their, their names and take a picture of it, just like she did. So that, because again, this is a very glassy surface on the subsidian, and so if the sticker comes off, then we have a free-floating number seven or something. Um, but if that's the case, then you can very, the tutors can very easily identify what that rock is. And so the students can then either sort the rocks that are in your kit, sort some rocks that are outside, maybe do a combination of both, and use the rocks that are in the kit that you can be sure we're putting into the right categories of sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks to, to take those rocks then outside and put them into the same categories. Either way, kids love rocks. Um, typically speaking, kids love rocks. I love rocks. It's just fun to get out and play with them. Uh, it's a great um, science experiment. That's how I would do uh, cycle one, week 23.